With this idea in mind, five years ago, I wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. Something that not only would help me survive a crisis without investing a fortune in stockpiles, but something that I could do around my house on a daily basis using only methods that were tested and proven by our forefathers for centuries. I wanted to unearth and learn the forgotten ways of our great-grandparents. I went to my grandfather to find out how he survived and to learn the little secrets that helped him stay alive in spite of almost everyone else dying. Now, he was almost 90 years old, but the old man was still in good shape. For three weeks on end, I absorbed his lessons like a dry sponge. And on top of that, we built a lot of things together, including a root cellar and a storm shelter, just like the folks did when he was young. We made lard and ham, and we smoked four turkeys and preserved them for winter in four different traditional ways, and a lot, lot more. Now, when I was a child, I was raised by my grandparents, but I hadn't spent much quality time with them until then. In fact, there were months when we barely even spoke, not because we couldn't stand each other, but only because I was always too busy working or taking care of my kids. A lame excuse and a thing that I deeply regretted later on in life. Well, my grandfather passed on a couple of years ago, and with him, a magnificent amount of survival knowledge. Now, I don't know if you're in a similar situation, but think about your grandfather and how many things he did or knew, things that will vanish forever into the dark abyss of ignorance. And because I deeply believed in lesson number three, that I was the only one who could change something, my goal for the last couple of years changed from not just learning, but saving our forefathers' ways. This is one of the most important things I've done in my life, and I'm proud of it, but it took me five difficult years.